Hello. This week will be a very venture capital forward kind of episode with a piquant, I don't know where I'm going with that, but it just seems like there's a lot of a VC talk going around recently. Maybe it's because we just had Bend Venture Conference last week. As I mentioned, I was down there for that. I did a full kind of recap piece that I will link up so that you can watch that if you're interested in more details about Ben Venture Conference, like who won, like themes that were prevalent down at Ben Venture Conference. Captured all that. Don't want to waste a lot of time with that. If you're interested in BBC and want more details, there's a video for that. So you can watch that. But the other part was I was getting into a lot of conversations with folks this week about venture capital, like local, how to raise uh, or who to talk to, all those kind of things. And it dawned on me that I might not have the like latest and greatest list of venture capital opportunities in Portland or in Oregon or like in the region to support startup founders. And so one of the things I like to do is like sometimes I like to look at things where I'm like, oh, I definitely know this. And then and then say, wait a second, maybe you don't know this at all. Maybe you're fooling yourself into thinking that you know this, or you've said this so many times that you believe that you know this. So let's step back. Let's let's walk in stupid and and not knowing anything, and let's reapproach the situation and and look at the the detail that you think you know to really determine whether you know what you actually think you know. So I decided to do that with local venture capital. It's not exhaustive. You know, I might I might miss a few here and there. And if I do, let me know. Like, that's what comments are for. Let me know who I'm missing. Uh, let me know. There may be some obvious ones that I forgot. I'm not going to force you to go read <laughs> the blog post. Why would I do that? The whole reason I'm doing this thing is because no one really reads anymore. And, and therefore, I am here to read it to you. It's kind of like, you know, reading Rainbow for the Portland startup scene or something. But um, what I'm going to do, take you through each of the each of the funds that I listed, maybe provide a little additional flavor that could help you out or like some of their history or, or you know, perspective on these funds and, and how they tend to participate with companies that maybe that'll be helpful to you, Portland venture capital that may be of interest to you as an early stage startup founder if you are building a venture scale company that has the potential to raise venture capital. Let's get going. Cascade Seed Fund uh, kind of came out of the Cascade Angel Fund and, and grew into a, a more traditional seed fund. Tend to be really easy to get a hold of. Great people like don't even need a warm intro. To them, just go fill out the form. They'll get in touch with you. You can talk to them about Cascade Seed Fund and what they invest in. Cough Drop Capital. I don't know a ton about these folks. I do know one of the, the leads there who is a founder, who's a tech founder, so he gets what you're going through. Might be worth taking a look at them. I know they do early stage again out of Bend. Did not get the chance to chat with them while I was at BBC. Elevate Capital, a uh, pretty prominent fund here in Portland, been around for a while, really focused on BIPOC and women-led companies and getting them the investment that they need. If you're raising in Portland and you are a BIPOC founder or a woman founder, uh, they're probably one of the funds you want to be talking to. Founders First Fund. This one doesn't even exist yet, but uh, Josh Carter, the, the one who's going to be the general partner or maybe managing partner, I don't know, but the... <laughs> <laughs> but Josh Carter is the one who's been talking the most about it. And uh, he's going to be having an informational session for accredited investors who are interested in getting involved in the fund and contributing a little capital to it. That's coming up in, in November, I think he said, with uh, more to reveal on the fund coming early 2025. Uh, about their thesis and, and where they're investing and all those kind of things for the general public. But all that being said, if you're an accredited investor, so you have a salary of more than $200,000 a year or your net worth minus your house 
is over a million dollars or all those other things that qualify you as an accredited investor and you have some capital to put to work you would like to put it to work in a fund founders first fund will be having an informational session for you idea ship this one's a little unique for the region they're very quiet but what idea ship does is they're really focused on intellectual property and and really things that can be patented trademarked all that kind of thing and how that provides value for a company that's really their interest in investing so if you if you're working on something that you believe to be patentable and defensible in that regard then idea ship may be a good fund for you to talk to again they go early uh, i've had experience with them not only just one-on-one -on -one, but also through several deals that they've participated in so i always recommend them to folks who are working on things that that have interesting and and defensible ip oregon sports angels if you're working in sports tech sports apparel sportsy sports 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 ball i don't know like but if you're associated with sports and you're interested in raising capital from early stage angels oregon sports angels is a great aggregation of a bunch of high net worth individuals that have come out of you know the the nike a lot of nike alums there really well connected if you're building anything that has to do with sports they're a good one to talk to oregon venture fund of course the 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 granddaddy of venture funds in oregon started out as the oregon angel fund as, a, as an angel collective and then you know matured into the oregon venture fund they uh have an annual rolling fund that if you're interested in participating you buy in once a year they also have like a a more formal traditional kind of fund that they invest out of as well but basically if you're a startup founder in the region even if you're like not quite ready to engage at that level it's important that you're at least on oregon venture funds radar even if it doesn't match up with the your current stage or, or or thesis or those kind of things it's just such a great network of people and the thing that i always remind folks about oregon venture fund is sometimes it's just getting in the room with oregon venture fund and maybe ovf doesn't decide to participate but maybe there are a couple of angels sitting there in the room who are like even if ovf isn't going in i'm going to cut you a check so from a network perspective ovf is huge uh, just a, a great collection of investors in town who may be interested in supporting you in your startup so always worth talking to ovf portland seed fund i've been able to follow them and again for ovf to some extent like they kind of started around the same time that uh that silicon floors did so i've had the opportunity to kind of watch them from like the capybara days all the way through and uh portland seed fund similar trajectory been around for a while been through several funds honestly probably one of the most active investors in portland as their name would kind of lead you to believe portland seed fund uh again if you're raising venture capital in portland uh, always worth getting some time with portland seed fund so they know what you're doing even if they don't decide to cut a check they they've got great connections in the community and can be very helpful in that regard and i got to catch up with angela from portland seed fund while i was down at and venture conference so that was nice too uh prohibited capital again another one i don't know much about and and their site is a bit cryptic but uh i i remember coming across them a while ago uh they just came up in conversation a couple times this week so uh, it made me want to add them to this list they uh come out of merriweather group which has largely been focused in uh, food and beverage and, and retail and and consumer product space so that's kind of where their expertise comes from but again they are positioning kind of as a fund but also potentially as a venture studio so if you're working in cpg or fnb or those kind of things uh it may be worth talking to prohibited capital 
Roadster Capital, another one of those that has been a, a work in progress for a while. You know, uh, Ryan had some good momentum prior to the pandemic, and then the pandemic happened, and then I was able to catch up with him uh, not too long ago, end of last year, maybe, which is now long ago. But I see him from time to time. We just explicitly talked about the fund back then and uh and you know they're they're raising a, a sizable fund and are going to be looking to put that capital to work obviously um i believe they had hit a close and were able to cut checks but a pretty agnostic fund and and new fund so not a lot of portfolio activity to show currently but really interested in kind of almost like idea ship. They're they're very interested in like hard technology science kind of led startups. So if that matches what you're doing, it might be worth talking to Roadster. Rogue Women's Fund. They are focused on women led startups. They came out of Rogue Venture Partners, which was another fund that started around the same time as Portland Seed Fund did. They have since uh, kind of, you know, gone to other parts of the U.S. They used to be all kind of Portland folks, and, and now a lot of the leads have relocated. But uh, Rogue Women's Fund continues to remain in Portland. Uh, Rogue Women's Fund was just part of the Show Her the Money documentary event that happened this week. So they're here. They're investing. Uh, if you are a woman building a venture scale startup, they are the first place you should talk to in town. Also, they have a really interesting program that if you're interested in VC or kind of learning the ropes, they have a program where you can participate as a fellow and kind of follow along with how they do the work that they do. So there are also opportunities if you're interested in the VC path with them. Seven Peaks Ventures out of Bend. I'm not sure that they're still active. They may be in one of those situations where they've raised their last fund and they're they're just managing the portfolio currently. I haven't seen a lot out of them. I didn't get a chance to run into anybody while I was down in Bend, which is which is where they're out of. But they were active for for quite some time in the region, and there's always the potential that they choose to raise another fund and, and, and have more activity. But right now, I'm not convinced they're actually actively investing. Still, Seven Peaks is a great group of people with lots of great connections, especially in the Bend area. And, and as we all know, Bend has a lot of high net worth individuals, just given the region. Um, so they are always a good one to connect with if you just want to get more engaged with the investment community throughout the state, especially in central Oregon. Stargazer Ventures, uh, the founder of Legit Script, which did really well, continues to do well. Again, kind of quiet. I'm not tracking on a lot of their deals, but I try and highlight them because they're really one of those quiet, but a ton of potential as a participant in the venture community in Portland. So uh, watching them closely, don't have a ton of experience with them, but always appreciate funds that have been started by founders because they just understand what you're going through and they've been through the whole venture capital thing. So uh, even though I'm not terribly familiar with them, Stargazer could be a really good one to take a look at. The BFM Fund, while started here, the management is not here actively day in, day out. They're focused on investing in Black-led companies and, and you know, underrepresented founders kind of writ large. So if you match that persona and are building a company, they're a good one to talk to, like Elevate. So BFM Fund and Elevate play in a very similar space and, and then... Rogue Women's Fund is, is in that mix as well. Not that the other funds don't invest in companies led by women or BIPOC founders, but their thesis is not predicated on women and BIPOC founders the same way that, that elevate the BFM Fund and Rogue Women's Fund are. So 
just some kind of targeting and alignment there to help you figure out the region and what folks are doing there. Thai Oregon Angels, long running angel group. Uh, again, another one that's always good to get in front of because even if they don't make a decision as a group to invest in your company, it's highly likely there's going to be one or two angels in that group who find what you're working on interesting and maybe want to talk to you individually and kind of cut you an individual check. So I always encourage folks to engage with angel groups, not necessarily seeking the approval of the group or the collective kind of communal approval, but with the hopes of unlocking maybe some capital from one or two angels in that group. Thai Oregon Angels is another good one in that regard, just from the network of angels they've worked with over time. And then finally, the VC in town, like this is like traditional venture capital. It's a uh, Voyager capital while headquartered in Seattle. Voyager Capital's Diane Freeman lives here in Portland, talks to everybody, knows everybody, is great, is a mentor of mine, just got a Lifetime Achievement Award from the Technology Association of Oregon. Diane's great. Voyager's great. The guidance here is this, which given the way the dynamics of the fundraising environment have changed in terms of like the the paper you're putting forward, the contractual obligation, this is what you need to know about Voyager. Voyager only does priced rounds. So if you're shopping a safe or you're shopping a convertible note, Voyager is not the fund for you. That being said, if you're in a position where you're able to do a priced round with the term sheet and you're like, this is what it costs to, to invest and, and there's no like squishy future equity kind of stuff going on, Voyager may be a good one for you. They don't always go early, but I've seen them go early on some deals uh, because the founders are willing to, to price the round. So if you're in that position and, and you know, you're know you able to do a price round, Voyager is always a good one to talk to. Again, kind of heavy tech marketing tech is, is kind of a sweet spot for them. But all that being said, talking to Diane is something you should be doing regardless of whether you're even on Voyager's radar or thesis in any way, shape and form. Like Diane is the person to talk to. She is the quintessential VC here in town. So if you're interested in raising venture capital and you're in Portland, talk to Diane. Click the subscribe button. And then magically, automatically, artificially, and intelligently, you'll get every new episode that I record. Just subscribe. That's all you got to do. And the new episodes will show up to you every week. So that's that. But as I said, VC forward episode. So next one I want to talk in and kind of a bend forward. Episode. It's VC. It's VC forward with a piquant bend flavor uh the, the company platformer announced that they had raised 2.5 million dollars uh platformer their basic my oversimplification of what platformer does is makes it easier for you to get on aws they just kind of streamline that whole thing and all the things and the stuff and everybody's like well it's easy to get on aws yeah sure if you're just building an early stage kind of thing it's easy to get on aws but once you got all the the different components and things and stuff of aws it can get really complex really quickly and so that's what platformer is here to help you do that round was led by oregon venture fund cascade seed fund also participated in that round so it's yeah, all coming together right i'm telling you about all these vcs and then here's platformer they got money from those VCs and happens to be in Bend. So I love it when a storyline comes together. Uh, I will keep an eye on Platformer and let you know how they're doing and where that's going. But just important to note, $2.5 million raise led by Oregon Venture Fund with participation by Cascade Seed Fund. So always nice to see local investors getting involved in local companies. So I know I'm kind of focused on the bend and, and VC and, and 
BVC and all those kind of things. Uh, you know, the, there's the, the whole venture and, and competition and, and that kind of thing happening. But another event that occurs outside of Portland that is still a potentially really valuable event for you is South by Southwest Pitch. If you're not familiar with South by Southwest, it's an annual gathering that happens in Austin, Texas. It originally began as a music festival, and then they added like movies, and then they added interactive, and interactive is really where the tech startups started to glom onto it. And it just continued to grow and grow and grow. And at one point, I don't even know how many years ago, 15 years ago, 12, I don't know. I've been working with them for more than a decade. They they started this program called South by Southwest Pitch, designed to give early stage startups a presence at South by Southwest, an opportunity to pitch while all these amazing people were in town to see those pitches. And the deadline for that application is coming up very quickly, like next week. So if you are interested in taking the stage at South by Southwest to pitch your product to tens of thousands, potentially hundreds of thousands of people, get you in front of all kinds of like movers and shakers in the startup community, and also just attend a great conference with all kinds of super interesting people in in interactive and education and music and movies and all that kind of stuff south by southwest pitch is for you but you can't procrastinate get on it because like it's going to be due soon and done and then you will have missed it and you'll be like well i missed my window to go to south by southwest and now i have to pay this like this regular ticket price to go to this great event so if you've got something you feel is worthwhile and should appear on stage at South by Southwest, I encourage you to get your application in. I look forward to seeing your application come through because I get to look at a lot of them. Like every year I get hundreds and hundreds of applications that I have to go through and watch the demo videos and look at the founders and you know, kind of rate them and see if I think you, you should be on stage at South by Southwest. So if you got something that's really great, please, please get your application in. I would love to see it. I would love to help you get on stage if you've got something amazing in, in South by Southwest Pitch. As I've said, just have been uh, really happy to watch that competition grow and, and provide a venue for amazing startups to share their stories with an international audience. So South by Southwest Pitch, get your applications in. Finally, uh, this is one that I should have been tracking on more closely. I didn't realize they were recording their meetings and sharing them. And I'm going to read it because it's such a, I wish they would come up with an acronym. I just, I just need an acronym for this one because it's, it's government and your know, government loves the acronyms, but this one for some reason is not yet an acronym. So let me read it to you. It's the State of Oregon Joint Task Force on Artificial Intelligence. So the OJTFAI, 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 is uh, having regular meetings, chaired by Skip Newberry, the head of Technology Association of Oregon, a variety of people on there, uh, all by way of saying, I'm just I'm just highlighting them because I want you to know the state is thinking about AI. They're making decisions about AI right now. They're trying to come up with uh, definitions about concepts and topics and and things having to do with AI. They were talking about potentially having public comment for those definitions. So, if you're involved in AI, if you want your voice heard at a state level about what the state has to say about AI and, and the regulatory environment around AI, then I think it's important that you track on the Oregon Joint Task Force on Artificial Intelligence. Uh, and I'll link that up so you can keep an eye on it. Uh, you know, you can watch the recordings of their previous meetings and kind of get yourself caught up on what they're doing. But again, uh, you know, when I was 
working in so when I worked in startups, I I paid attention to the regulatory environment because some of the startups I worked for were heavily influenced by the regulatory environment, like healthcare and, and you know federal government work and those kind of things. But you know, I kind of noticed that in a lot of the startup community, regulation, government don't come into play as much, and for better or worse, with AI. The feds and the state, the city, everybody's concerned about AI. So if you're working in AI, I encourage you, even though you have very little time, as a startup founder, it is very important for you to at least be paying attention to what is going on in the regulatory environment around AI. And if you have the time to contribute or voice your opinion, that is absolutely critical as well. If you don't have time to do that, at least at the Oregon level, like Technology Association of Oregon probably does the best job from a, a regulatory kind of like legislative standpoint. Even AI Portland, which, you know, is, is such a great group of people who and they focused events on all aspects of AI from you know, creative uses of AI to product management uses of AI, even they understand and are taking the time. They had our Senator Ron Wyden show up and, and talk about AI with, the, with their last gathering. So government is going to play a role in this. There will be regulations. There will be legislation. So as a startup founder, please do yourself a favor. If you're working in AI and who isn't, but if you're working in AI, please keep an eye on what's going on with this kind of stuff and the joint task force on artificial intelligence for the state of Oregon may be a good way to kind of like get better context about what's going on at a state level. Cool. Clearly this wasn't AI because like AI doesn't stumble over its language as much as I do, but I really appreciate you being here. I hope all of this was valuable. I hope that additional detail on the, the VCs and that kind of thing was something you can put to good use. Keep an eye on the regulatory environment for AI. And until we get the chance to chat again, please keep up the good work.